Hello and welcome back to the Let's Backflip show happy hour. I'm Ryan Fring, co-creative director here at Backflip. And uh, joining me not today is not John. So that is uh, that is my inverse way of saying John is not here. It's the end of the year. We're cranking on a lot of different projects and he's actually editing right now. Uh, he's got to edit something that's got to get out this afternoon for tomorrow. So uh, you'll all be seeing that come out too uh, as it's a part of our Christmas party show video thing that we're creating this year that's going to be a lot of fun so wait for that before we get to our guest this is a happy hour so we like to talk about drinking uh which is maybe the most fun part of this uh well i guess aside from having really awesome guests but this this helps me uh be maybe a little bit more interesting we've got plain spoke cocktails i was actually shopping yesterday and i'm walking into high v and I, this guy just catches my eye and he like looks at me and like, I'm getting these eyes and I'm like, who is it beneath the mask? I can't tell who it is beneath the mask. So, and he like kind of pulls his mask down a little and I'm like, I have no idea who you are. I'm like, I'm going to go be friendly. And I walk over and he's just a rep, uh, you know, a manufacturing guy for plain spoke. And it turns out they're just down the road from us. They make these great, uh, ready to drink cocktails. This is the brandy old fashioned, which is what I had yesterday. And it is delectable. Um, so I wanted to show that I'm not going to be drinking it today. I've got a lot of writing tasks this afternoon to uh, to do. So I'm drinking a lot of coffee. That's that's one of the things. And I've got some water, of course, here. But that's not why we're here. Uh, that's not why you've come to the live stream or the podcast. You've come for this man, the man, the myth, the legend himself of diligent Mr. Daniel Kinney. Thanks so much, Daniel, for for coming and hanging out with us. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, uh, what do you what do you got for us? What are you drinking today? What's keeping yeah, you? Yeah, my my small plug, which I one of those things I can't live without. Uh, it's the the Cadence Cold Brew. It's nitro infused. I like the the creamy softness along with the uh, cold brew aspect mm -hmm. of it. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I'm going to. I don't have a lot of work left today, but it's going to be a long weekend with friends and weddings and everything. So I'm going to reserve the alcohol for all of that and instead do more coffee right now with you. And you got to get you got to get emotionally and mentally ready with that coffee. Oh, yeah. I love it. Always got to pour it uh, and activate the nitros too. see the bubbles yeah. in that jar. Yeah, that's great. And that's it's like that nitro that makes it smooth and creamy. Right? Yep. 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 That's kind of what you're talking about there. Yep. Nice. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, we were yeah, talking no before, and uh, I just can't, you know, help help but uh, have conversation. I always try to keep it quiet beforehand, um, but we haven't seen each other in a little while, so we're yeah. doing a little bit of catching up. But for those who aren't familiar with you, can you give us a little rundown? Like, who are you, and what do you do? <laughs> hard fun. questions. We're gonna be um, hard hitting. I, I mean, it's very. Um... I mean, there's long and short of it. Uh, I, I think I, I really started my career focusing on editing, um, and that was my focus, and that's really what I did here for a decade in town um, at uh, Mirror 34 Productions. And then through that, I just kind of transitioned my way into directing more and more, um, and then through that also found writing and kind of really um, dictating the story, dictating the creative, um, and then after uh you know putting my time in you know underneath a company a larger umbrella i decided to go out on my own and that's what i've been doing for the past three years so even though i call myself uh the diligent company i always you know explain it's a moniker that really uh it's a company that starts and ends with me you know i'm on set directing um putting together the assets pulling everything together and i'll be the one on the back end delivering it through the edit so um, I think really that's kind of the long and short of who, what, where here in Madison. And, you know, that's what I do. So I love that honesty, too. And, you know, just the, the diligent company is Daniel Kinney. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I, I read that somewhere, maybe. Um, yeah. But I just, I, you know, that that's so authentic because a lot of times we put ourselves out there in ways that, uh, kind of fall apart if yeah. somebody asks a question like, oh, yeah, who do you work with? Well, at, the, at my company, it's just me, but I collapse, you know, <laughs> but if you get out in front of it and you're like, no, 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 this is this is me, but this is a whole lot of stuff that I do. Yeah. 
I, I love that that branding there. Yeah, and I, it's actually it's I, I mean everything's changing so much in the industry all the time anyway that you know it's it's actually it I've gotten a because like you said it's how you represent yourself how you want to go into those mm -hmm. sales meetings those conversations and you know where you want to kind of give that uh, that caveat that like oh you know it's not full brick and mortar with employees and 40 hour mm -hmm. work weeks and but I, I've I've gotten really positive responses for what I do and you know why I do it and you know it's definitely not just me. There's a whole team of people that I always surround myself mm -hmm. with to accomplish all the different things we do. So it just kind of um, you know it it starts and ends with me. So I, it really sometimes it limits the bandwidth. I've figured mm -hmm. out um, how much work I can accomplish in a year. Um, but other than that, I, you know, it gives me a lot of flexibility and a lot of um, different ways to do different projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what uh, I've got so many questions here. One of the ones that was just top of mind after you were talking was what is a What does a work week look like for you? You know, uh, not a, <clears throat> you said not a brick and mortar, not 40 hours, but you know, it's not like you're vacationing all week and once in a while <sighs> you do something, I'm sure you're busting your butt. You know, yeah, I mean, the, the, the typical work week for me is really kind of balancing and triaging um, editing projects, anything I'm producing and putting together, and then making sure I'm caught up for those days that I'll need to be on set. Um, the The first couple of years that I was doing it, um, my days on set were pretty spread out among uh, uh, through the year. So it really wasn't a hard balancing act, but the this past year um just the amount of content that i needed to put together i was on set a lot more so it was just a lot oh, of okay. of of balancing of you know making sure the drafts are delivered so i can be on set and you know just i think balancing act is really mostly what my days typically end up being um it's never one project it's never one edit it's never putting together one production. It's always a few different things floating around at the same time for me, mm -hmm. which makes and me really appreciate, you know, timing like now where, you know, I have two edits that I'm working on that is very refreshing. And I relish the time when I can actually do something, take a breath, you know, sit down and be like, okay, what should I do to my website? And, you know, a few different things right. like that. Just um, things that you, that there's no time for when you're, you know, <clears throat> producing and creating everything that you need to for clients. Yeah, that's, and that's one of those things that we always talk about, um, continuing our marketing, continuing creative and uh, just growth while you're yeah. really, really busy because that's always tough. And I feel like, <laughs> There's been times where we get really, really busy and all that stagnates and mm -hmm. we definitely feel it. And, um, you know, the click through rate, we see that go down, too, because we're not creating mm -hmm. new content that we put out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's always that hard thing to do. And I I do love being super busy, but I can't wait. Like this week is nuts. The guy at Plain Spoke was asking me, he's like, okay, creative director at, at your agency, what does that look like? And I was like, Bleh. I was like, I've always wanted to share this with somebody like, here's my day today. This is not typical, but this is one of my busier days. And we have many busy days. I was like, all right, yeah. I woke up and I worked out. And then I got the kids around and took them to school. Uh, you know, four kids took them to school, had to deal with all their stuff to get them to school. Yeah. Uh, got to the office our servers down right now. So I had to troubleshoot a little bit of file transfer with the editor to try to figure some of that stuff out. And there's some networking issues and I'm kind of the tech guy. So taking care of that. Then I had a nine o'clock with somebody who could provide some marketing services for us, which is great. It's like the cobbler having the worst shoes. So let's bring some marketer in to help us yeah. uh, with our, with our shoes as it were. Um, oddly enough, one of the partners here is named Shoemaker. So uh, we, there's probably a funny joke and script in here <laughs> on that. Um, it's just a wonderful so that's illusion, the, and that's enough. It's a good yeah. illusion. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we'll talk about this in a video, and then we'll just cut to him. like He's like making a shoe <laughs> and looks up. <laughs> um, so that's 9 to 10. And then afterwards, uh, I jump over to a proposal that I'm working on that's got to get out. 
10 30 have a haircut so that's a little personal me time which is fantastic <laughs> uh just away from everything and, and no communication <clears throat> got back after that we had to film something for saturday so i started helping that uh, get that together and get someone going on it here who could do that and then uh, had to do a new proposal for something that had to come out today uh, with somebody who is co-creative directing with me, but they're kind of taking over this process. They're learning this process, which is fun. So a little bit of training and work there. Then had to prep for a new pitch on the website downtown to a current client. So prep for that, drive downtown, hang out with them for an hour and a half. Then I picked up some popcorn and scheduled more popcorn for our client boxes this year because we wanted to get a bunch of local stuff. So I stopped by, was it Carly's? I don't know if it's Carly's or Clary's. Um, the popcorn. On state. Popcorn yeah, it's store. right on state. Yeah. yeah. Um, stopped there, did all that. Uh, got out of there, went, ran by High V real quick because I was out of spinach at home. Uh, met Plain Spoke guy, talked to him. Was like, hey, let me get your contact information. Would love to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just like, hey, you're doing cool stuff. I want to know more about the cool stuff. Uh, you know, they have great marketing in terms of this graphics that they're doing. So maybe they need help. Maybe not. Either way, I like to connect. Got uh, out of there and then met John at Kohl's because we had to get costumes for Saturday. Uh, so we did a little bit of shopping there. And then after that, I went to JCPenney's and Target because I'm looking for more costumes for other things. And in the midst of that, I got alerted that a website had some malicious files on it that we host. Uh, so I texted our developer. It's after hours. It's like 6.30. She's you know having dinner. She's out. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of close to the office. And I'm like, hey, I'll just go back to the office. Uh, luckily, in the meantime, my wife and family were like, okay, we know you have a crazy couple of days. Just do what you got to do and then come home and be home. Um, so then I went back to the office and started working on that. And Scott was still here, our business partner. He came in, talked to me for about 20 minutes about random things we had to catch up on. And I got that done. I did a little bit more writing, uh, left here, picked up my kids on the West side. I'm on the East side right now, oh, went geez. home, made a little snack and then continued writing a script for tonight and more of a script for tomorrow. Um, kind of some just in time things. And then, uh, Got to bed about 10 o'clock. So, you know, when we don't have days like this, I treasure them. I also yeah. treasure these days after the fact. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's at the, the one thing that you guys always do that really kind of blows my mind is that um, when you're marketing and when you're promoting yourself, it's rarely like, hey, this is stuff that we've done. I mean, I'm sure you do this aspect of it too, is that you're like, hey, this is mm -hmm. stuff we've done for this client. This is work we've already done. This is work we've paid for. The thing that you do that always just blows my mind is like, hey, we made this video on our own, just going batshit crazy on the studio, just to promote ourselves. We, we tried to kill ourselves in the process. And here, this is, this is our marketing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. which which yeah. to me is always you know i definitely have a different bandwidth than a building of people but to me mm -hmm. that's always just kind of blows my mind is that your bar for marketing is is i, I would even argue ridiculously high to a certain degree is that <laughs> you know you kind of you kind of put it up there unnecessarily <laughs> challenging yourselves continually with the christmas videos and all that sort of thing that it's like what are you doing to yourself sometimes? <laughs> yeah, don't tell my business director that. Uh, he, he definitely <laughs> sees the value of the extra creative effort. And it's funny too, because yeah. like we've done one radio commercial, you know, we've had a couple radio ad buys and we got one giant client out of it. But we also got a lot of great brand juju. Um, yeah. Just people being like, oh, hey, that was hilarious. You know, we heard that or, you know, we got search traffic went up and, you know, so it's that brand identity but that point you're making is also the one that the, the the ppc company we talked to yesterday mentioned they're like you guys have so much great you've client work you ever just <laughs> remarket that <Yeah. laughs> we're like oh well we do share it sometimes but we've never like ppc marketed it and you know yeah. there's hundreds of videos and maybe 30 of them would be like these are the best of the best um 
to do. So I'll, I'll take that. You're as an entrepreneur, if you could just give me all the, you know, all the best things that you've noticed going out on your own. Well, that, yeah, that's, I think that's what, I think that's the one of the most difficult things is that, uh, trying to figure out that, that guaranteed kind of, um, foot in the door decision-making type of process to really kind of unlock that potential of like, Hey, you know, I know I could do some great stuff for you. What, what do you, what do you think about me? Like, you know, what's the best way to make that impression? That's, that's constantly shifting and changing. And, you know, one of the mm -hmm. things I've figured out in three years of doing this is, you know, it's pretty much wrong about everything to start with, mm, you know, sure. you just immediately figure out how wrong you are. And it's almost like a, a guessing game of continually figuring out what doesn't really work. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Cause it, you know, it's for me, word of mouth and, um, recommendations from company to company has been, you know, my bread and butter and, you know, anything that I've mm -hmm. really put effort into outside of that has just, you know, kind of not really given me the results that I was expecting. So it's, it's really just a bizarre mm -hmm. world to kind of enter into. So, especially when in my kind of situation where promoting myself is the brand and the brand is myself and that all kind of thing intertwines a little bit that's a little, <laughs> a little dicey sometimes too especially you know yeah you kind of all you almost have to i was talking to somebody about this the other day is that you almost have to intentionally feed your ego some to yes prep yeah. yourself up to kind of get into that mode of promoting yourself and that's really kind of a weird um juxtaposition sometimes so when yeah it, so we've many talked about that you before. try to do that's egoless mm -hmm. to turn on the ego is really difficult yeah we we've, we've talked about that before too because uh you know the idea of humility is not necessarily just downplaying everything but mm. uh realistically acknowledging your talents and your successes but how do you come off not being a douchebag or rude yep. Oh, or prideful in a wrong way. And yeah. especially, you know, especially when you're promoting yourself to others, how are you like, yeah, I mean, I'm the best. Like, you want the best thing for this? That's me, right? <laughs> like for us, it's great because right, we have like the separation of church and state over here. So the business director can, can be like, hey, these guys are the best. And let me tell you why. Um, and I don't have to be in the awkward place of, of trying to be yeah. like, okay, how do I not be douchey about this? Because that's, yeah. you know. Yeah, I totally feel what you're saying. Well, it's it's why bands have opening acts. It's why comedians have opening acts. It's like, you know, when you're you're hitting the stage and that sort of you need like a hype man in that sort of situation. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it's hard going into meetings where it's like, okay, this is my little bit of hype, this is my spiel, like let's get into like the practical and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a very it's an interesting um gear to kind of switch into and I can always I feel it in my bones. I, I'm capable of switching into that gear, but I can definitely feel myself kind of transitioning into that. It's a different, it's mm -hmm. accessing a different part of pretty much all of me to kind of go into that sales mode and pitch mode and mm -hmm. promotion mode. It's a, it's a different type of animal. Well, I'm sure you two, you, you figure out how to do it in the best way for you to yeah. feel not crappy about it, but also to be like, Hey, yeah, you know, like this is how I can really, really serve you. And I can't serve you in this way. But mm -hmm. if we work together on this, I think it's going to be really, really awesome. Well, and the, the the small kind of advantage that I have so far is that, um, you know, with the size and shape of my company, there's only so much work I can do. In the year. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's a lot of clients that you know even if they kind of were interested in doing something that i might not necessarily have the bandwidth to take on everybody so you know mm -hmm. kind of everybody that i work with right now i really appreciate working with them we've developed shortcuts we've developed you know just brevity and creative that really lends itself to a very easy working environment an efficient working environment like you know we get a lot of things done very quickly because we've done mm -hmm. so much over the years. So that's, you know, something I really cherish and I really appreciate with the amount of clients that I have that, 
you know, it's almost, it's a weird word to kind of describe it, but I'm almost kind of like a boutique production company at this point is that, you know, mm -hmm. I can choose my clients the same way that they choose me to a certain degree, um, mm -hmm. which sounds so horrifically pretentious to me, but you know, it's the, it's the reality of this situation for me. So, yeah, no, but I, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's where, whoops, button. I got these buttons set up to do this. <laughs> I was in the wrong yeah, chat sure chat window. It wasn't working. Yeah. Yeah. I've got this little stream deck that, uh, so I don't have to take my eyes off. Um, yeah. but I think that's, you know, that's where we all aspire to be. And certainly, you know, you might've gotten this question or like, it's always fun, uh, coming back home. And then you're like, Oh, just your parents kid or just, you know, the cousin that everyone remembers when you, when you were little and you know, the little, uh, little sarcastic, goofy kid or whatever it was yeah um because my mom is always like hey how's uh how's the business going you know you guys you guys still getting enough work and you know asking those questions and it's like it's a great question an honest question uh but it's it's interesting because my response is like well yeah i mean we've got eight people so, so we're, we're doing <laughs> something right um but like that idea of like when have you made it and maybe everyone has uh, different kind of levels there. But for me, in terms of mercenary art, which is what I think we're doing, we're getting paid to do art. Yeah. Uh, so there's a mercenary nature to it. And we kind of balance production needs versus artistic creative needs and try to come up with something that uh, appropriately, maybe not even balanced, but appropriately integrates those to serve whatever our stated goals are. Mm -hmm. But in terms of making it like not accepting every job that comes along. Like that's been big yeah. for me to yeah. be in a meeting and be like, yeah, you know, I don't know if we're the right fit for this. Yeah. Um, and, and just to be frank about like, you know, you've seen our stuff. It's crazy in a lot of cases and yeah. that might not be your brand and that yeah. might not work for you. But if you're open to our interpretation of this, We'll, we'll think about your brand. We'll bring that in and we'll work with it and we'll do it in a way that we think could be really, really effective. Yeah. But if you're not open to that, you know, if, if you're just looking for a dude with a camera, um, there's lots of those and there's lots of people who are talented like that, just, uh, yeah. out of college or whatever, like try that out. And, uh, when you grow and when that doesn't work, call Daniel, call, <laughs> call Ryan, you know, we'll help you out. We'll, we'll bring what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it, it it's uh, I, I think it applies to so much more than just kind of you know the work we do and stuff like that. But I, I, I think it's a uh, to get a little heady. I think it's a larger cultural shift of just um, I've had this conversation many many times. It, the power of no mm. of you know from you know being a full-time employee and kind of drawing the line in certain places, uh, you know, your time commitment and that sort of thing, or, or uh, you know, just clientele of like, how quickly can you turn this around? Like, no oh boy, <laughs> especially if 99% of the time your answer is yes. I, you know, I feel like that means a no can be so much more powerful. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I think, I, I, respectful too. I think there's a lot of respect that comes with not being, you know, whether it's inside of a project, whether it's accepting a project, whether it's just your personal kind of bandwidth of like how much energy can I expend in a week? Um, mm -hmm. You know, kind of putting a no in there in certain places, I think can be very valuable and kind of focus you up on, what's a little bit more important. And I think in some ways can earn yourself some respect from different clients, different institutions and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's something I've been thinking about a little bit more too. And just, you know, I did this for more of a balance and then, you know, there's months out of the year that I don't have anything in balance whatsoever. It's just a constant churn and burn. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think no is necessarily the answer for that, but you know, it's, it's trying to make sure I'm constantly, you know, kind of 
making all my responsibilities for my clients happy, but then also kind of looking back and making myself happy as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, and, and setting up the, the form and organizational structure or communicational, you know, communication mechanism so that when you have these conversations, it's simple and easy. So the first time somebody says, okay, we're going to need this ASAP, you can be like, okay, well, ASAP for me means I can get this, you know, we can get this wrapped up in two months. Yeah. It doesn't mean next week, you know, no. and here's why. Um, or, uh, you know, you have something and like, okay, we waited, you know, I don't know if this happens to you, but just with so many projects going on, sometimes we'll wait weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to get feedback and we'll try to, you know, email, yeah. call, all the things to get feedback, nothing. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, we need that next week. I'm like, okay. We blew through our original <laughs> timeline, which means there's already stuff in the next three or four yeah. weeks that are pretty much filled. So yeah. again, you know, that expectation and that's, it's always hard because in the service industry, you build these muscles to say yes. Yeah. And I think it's, I think what we have to retrain after we're out of this startup mode where we say yes, uh, just kind of wantonly. Yeah, uh, we have to figure out how to say yes, and it's going to be a little later or, mm -hmm. you know, that in, old improv trope of yes, and so that we don't burn and churn, especially well, when we're in charge of things ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I would I mean, the, the, the biggest thing that I would kind of tack on to that is the, the yes, and but it's yes, and educate. That, yeah. that, that's one of the things that I really kind of always task myself with is it's never, it's never, I, I can't do this or I can't, you know, it, it's, this is the timeline we're looking at because of a few of these, you know, it's not all the nitty gritty of like, you know, everybody's booked, let me know this so I can get it. You know, it's not putting the pressure on the client anyway, but it's educating them about the entire process. Even if it's as, mm -hmm. something as simple as, this time of year, everybody is busy. So let's, you know, let's look out, let's put it on the calendar and let's hold those dates no matter what. We don't have the luxury of just kind of wish washing here or there because of everybody's calendar. And we want to use the most talented people. And that's the way we can use the most talented people is preparing and having that date set on the horizon and holding to it. So mm -hmm. for me, I think it's really important to try to simultaneously educate you know clients in the process of doing things of of how easy an edit can be on one hand when we've planned everything beforehand and how difficult mm -hmm. it can be when we step on set and are figuring out it as we go it, it, it's mm -hmm. night and day um but but that little bit of education i think um, can go a very long way in trust and shorthand and expectations and, you know, turning that around and being better on other projects and future projects. I think it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's an important thing to do. And it's an important thing to do tactfully that, you know, I think um, in some ways I just don't, you know, I've been around it um, in different capacities, but that just, Yes, the customer's always right. They're our customer. They pay us to take care. I just don't think that is a fitting mentality and business model for many things anymore. I just don't think, you know, I, I, being gung-ho is one thing, but just universally yes for, to everything I think is is different. It, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't feel, maybe that's mm -hmm. just, it just doesn't feel right to me anymore. Yeah, well, and I wonder, too, if that idea, you know, the customer is always right, makes sense for, um, I forget the term, but uh, products that are quantity based, you know, sales are quantity based. We're not in a quantity based sales market per se, you know, yeah. sure, 10 is better than five, 20 <laughs> is potentially better than 10 in that regard. But it's not thousands of units or millions of units that we're yeah. selling. So there's very intentional work. There's very personal work being done for each of these. And so to say the customer is always right in that, yeah, they want it next week, they can have it. You just can't do that because it's so customized. There's so much, you know, many, there's so many moving parts, yeah. whether you have to rewrite a script or you got to call, 
you know, a crew to get a shoot together or, you, you know, you got to edit, put something into your edit schedule, even though you're filled up for the next two weeks. You can't just say yes versus, you know, Amazon. Two years ago, I, I bought a present and it got shipped to the house, not in a box. So my wife saw it. It was for my wife. Oh. And I, I got on Amazon and I was like, hey, this is pretty crappy. I, I had bought this and this had never happened before. I had bought this for my wife and it didn't yeah. come in a box. It just came without a box. And I think this is also when they started shipping things outside of boxes because it's more economical, less garbage. Yeah. Um, and I got somebody on the horn who might not have been understanding my issue so much. They're like, oh, sorry, tell us what, wrong, what's wrong with the product. I was like, there's nothing wrong with the product. Works great. Uh, but it was shipped, not in a box. It ruined the surprise. And I had no idea that it was going to be shipped that way. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they're like, okay, we'll just go ahead and send you another one. So not only were they not understanding what I was saying, their solution was this couple hundred dollar coffee maker. We'll just send you another yeah. one, right? Yeah. So because of the quantity of units, it doesn't matter. Just yeah. make the problem go away by giving giving them another one. Yeah. Um, funny, funny story too. Basically the next year you got that option of like, uh, this is going to not be shipped in a box. Do you want it in a box? So I, I know that there's probably thousands ship is a of gift. people who've complained. Yeah, yeah ship is a this, gift. This, or any number of but, but I think, you know, that's that's the difference between what we do and more quantity-based businesses. And so we got we got to come up with a, maybe we can do it here. Maybe it'll take years, but we got to come up with a good <laughs> moniker, or like, you know, methodology or, or, or theme of like, for the service industry, the customer is not always right, but... Yeah. You know, what is it? Well, it, and even if you really try to quantify what we do with like views or hits or anything like that, it, it really, I mean, that that is only kind of a, you know, it's a, there's a big difference between how many impressions a video has and then how many click throughs it has. You know, mm -hmm. that's night and day of, you mm -hmm. know, certain videos of, is, is it just something that caught a lot of people's attention or is it just something that, made people have a buying decision you know that's that's a huge difference um mm -hmm. and that's always kind of a really difficult thing to i mean if you're kind of funneling it through facebook instagram any number of things like that there's more data that, than we can even you know kind of process anymore but mm -hmm. um it's really even if you are quantifying it there's there's still a lot of things that there's a lot of gray in there that really yeah it makes what we're doing, what we're producing, what we're creating a, an interesting product. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever have to convince people of ROI or, you know, like why, why are we doing it this way? Why don't we just do it that way? Not, not much. Um, you know, I've been in a good position that a lot of things I come into is that the ball's already rolling on something. Mm -hmm. um, they know what they want and why they're doing um so for me it's a lot of execution at that point mm -hmm. um but yeah that is just such you know an interesting argument to have of you know how is this going to be viewed by your consumer i mean i think mm -hmm. that's the other thing too is like even even in those larger aspects of where it's not necessarily sales or anything like that is you know you oh can you make this change can you turn this two minute video into a five minute video. Oh, can you make it seven? Have you considered your audience? Like mm -hmm. they're not taped down a clockwork orange style with their eyeballs open. Like mm -hmm. that seven minutes is a big ask for your audience. Even yeah, if we've got to do something significant in seven seconds. Let's yeah, start there. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, even, it, even if it's that, that question, it's, it's content questions. It's that you, mm -hmm. you have to get, you have to regard that final end audience a lot of the time, which, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that regard, yeah, the customer is always right because if they don't watch the video, then they don't watch the video. <laughs> then that's, mm -hmm. you know, there's no wiggle room there. So yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. it's a different aspect of who you're treating as your ultimate customer. Right. And that's, that's kind of a interesting place that we're in. We're not an agency in that we do ad buys um, really. I mean, we've helped mm -hmm. people out with that. But we are in the sense that we develop campaigns uh, yep. from go with with our clients, uh, some of our clients and, yep. uh, you know, different clients. It's works better 
than others. Uh, but the ones that I think hang around and the ones that we kind of continually see successful over and over again, it's just more of more of that trusting in that partnership yeah. um, and coming together. So they get the ball rolling, but they might not know exactly what they need, but they're open to talk about it. And then mm-hmm. we can talk frankly about all those things that you mentioned, like, OK, somebody told you you need to get into video and, you know, one of your competitors does tons of good stuff and they do it this way. And so your first gut reaction is to copy them and do what they do. Well, what if we consider, yeah, consider your brand, consider your customers, consider where this is going and develop something that goes specifically there. It might not work, but that's the best starting point that uh, we've found and the partners that that kind of enter into that discussion, that's that's where we create, I think, some of our best work. And Mm -hmm. it's the most effective in in Mm -hmm. most cases. Well, and uh, the 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 aspect of it that I really kind of discovered along the way, and I'm just kind of leaning into a little bit more, is that I do what I do because I enjoy it. I have fun. Mm. I it's fun to be on set. Like there's my digitally high five you here. Yeah, there's there's like <laughs> there's a joy in what I do. So really, mm-hmm. what I've what I've started to discover is the more that I can bring that on set, the more that I can share that with clients and w- what we're doing together, the, the really, it really goes a lot farther than I would have expected. Um, because, you know, it's, it's that, it's that argument that I'd be doing this either way. Um, you know, if I, if I had some sort of other job, I'd be grinding away doing something ridiculous on my computer at night. So, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, there's a certain appreciate appreciation there with it is that like, oh, you're allowing me to do this, get paid and have fun. Mm-hmm. Like you should enjoy the process as well, especially right. more recently the past year where it's just been a lot of food is I like eating food. I like eating <laughs> so it's, it's dangerous. Really, <laughs> it's really, it, 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 it's fun. And a lot of it too is, you know, um, you know, it's, it's just weird. I've been on other, um, you know, I've been on lots of sets, but I've been on other sets where, you know, it's almost like you're, you're walking around a house with like creaky boards. It's like, Hmm. Oh, don't, don't dive into the food. The, the, no, that's, that's the professional food. Don't touch it. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, sometimes don't touch it. It's covered. (laughs) It's covered in other stuff. Sometimes yeah. don't touch it, but yeah, we haven't filmed it yet. Don't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. That hasn't been in front of camera. You can't eat it, but yeah. other times it's covered in stuff. But you know, one of the larger shoots we did this year is that it was very few things we, we handled and we shot that weren't immediately edible. So mm-hmm. they kind of went from prep station to tabletop to client table and we all shared it and ate it and ate what we were promoting and kind of talked about what it tasted like. And that was, Mm. that that was a lot of fun. And there's a lot of joy Mm -hmm. in that just, you know, kind of, you know, sharing that with everybody and not having everybody kind of walking around on eggshells and be like, Hey, that, that looked really good. I'm really curious to try what we were shooting. Yeah. Take a freaking handful of it and cram it in your mouth (laughs) because that's what we're here for. You yeah. know, we're making a video about the joy of this food. You should enjoy it too and kind of understand it. And I think that le- leads to kind of an understanding of, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it on certain things. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've, I, th- I think I've just been around so many different styles of sets. I know a lot of what I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's nice to be able to kind of bring that and dictate that on my own. It's kind of a, a fun experience that I was never really expecting to be able to do so quickly, I guess. Mm, sure. Yeah. And that, that idea I think is very interesting of those uh, sentiments. And I think that's probably just uh, largely as well, kind of part of our culture in the Midwest here, mm-hmm. um, like appreciate each other and just be uh, realistic in, in that regard. Like, yeah, everyone wants to eat this. Yeah. So, you know, we're done with it and it's, it doesn't have junk all over it. Like, yeah, go ahead, dig in, you keep, know. keep working, keep tearing down or whatever you're doing. But like, yeah, yeah, by all means, you know, we're here to have fun and uh, do great work together. 
Yeah. 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 It's, um, a, it's a fun process. It's about 12.43. I, I mentioned before we're going to do a tight hour. We'll, we'll try to be as tight as possible. Yeah. So fine. we are going to be playing a game in a little bit. But I did want to kind of ask as well. Like I'm very curious. Like, What are some just uh, some of the best lessons you've learned when you maybe went out on your own or even, I guess, uh, when working at other agencies or, or production houses? Like, Maybe what are your favorite one or two things? that you've learned that you'd like to impart onto the world. And we are live um, right now. If, if you're listening to the podcast, we're not live. Or if you're rewatching the video, which is all of our numbers are typically in the rewatching podcast, which I love. Yeah. Um, but when we get the, when we get the engagement live, it's fun. Cause I, I love it when somebody throws a wrench in things. Um, somebody asked like 20 minutes ago, what's going on? over on Twitch. <laughs> We're talking with the uh, director from the Diligent Company, uh, the Diligent Company himself, Daniel Kinney. Um, just hanging, drinking some Cadence cold brew, and I actually had an espresso as well. Um, nice. Just to kind of hear some experience. So, so ask lesson. your questions in chat and we'll, we'll address them. Yep. I, I think... Um... I mean, I think what I was just explaining was a was a good lesson. Um, is mm. uh, you know bringing joy, bringing um, the bringing dictating how I think a set should feel. I think in figuring that out, in the joy, in the lack of pretension, in that I want ideas from grips. I want. I, I want ideas from everybody. I want everybody to know it's a collaboration. I want everybody to know they're appreciated. I think they sound so fucking basic, but mm -hmm. it's something that I think can be very overlooked in larger mechanisms. So I think that's one lesson that it, it wasn't really a hard lesson for me. It was more just something that I kind of, um, you know, what I wanted to do. And I just found there's more success the more I do it. Um, I think the other awesome. lesson that I really kind of was a little bit more difficult to come into um, was I think before kind of starting out on my own and before kind of really taking on more and more directing, um, I was constantly kind of looking at other directors, looking at how they do things and constantly mm. kind of comparing myself to that. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing, you know, certain aspects or certain per personality traits just aren't me. Um, and immediately thinking that was a way that I was falling short. When I think it's actually kind of the complete opposite is that you, you need to find those traits and those aspects that make you uniquely you. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to kind of lean into them and hold on to them and cherish them and share them. Um, because I think... Uh, you know, if you put your personality out there, you're going to find the crews, the clients, the, the everything that really kind of meshes with that well. Um, and it's just going to be easier if what you're putting out there is kind of authentically you. Uh, it, I, I think it makes things a lot more difficult if you're kind of constantly putting out an image or some sort of personality that's not quite true to you you have to kind of hold on to that and maintain that and there's so many different aspects of it that can drain your energy it just makes life and work and everything you're doing a lot easier when you're just kind of the way you're presenting the work and how you do it is you i i think that it goes along with the other thing i was talking about but that i think that was a more difficult thing to kind of come into you're muted I have I... two buttons down here to mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I was going to say, well, I, I had a quick heart much. attack because sometimes my speakers click off too. So I was like, wow. Yeah. I clicked the wrong mute button and I think I like muted my browser instead of the app. <laughs> it's like too much going on, too much technology for my own good. Um, but again, I, I really love that, that sentiment, um, you know, the authenticity and, mm -hmm. you know, certainly we learn from others and how others have done things really, really well. 
But then I think what's important is to take it and make it our own. Yeah. And in some cases, there is imitation and copy. But if we're being authentic, you know, in, in as much as we can, I think that's the success that you've seen on set. That's where I feel like the client will come and be like, oh, man, I just love set days when we can come and, and yeah. hang out and, and do this creative stuff. And I'm like, that's what I want everyone to say. Yeah. Well, yeah, never mind. I, I, I've really appreciated crew telling me the same thing. They're like, this was fun. Mm. I, I just got done being bent over backwards for three weeks in Florida, you know, doing documentary stuff that they said it was going to be eight hour days. We were shoot, we were doing 12, 14 hour days and it was just horrible. Yeah. This felt like, like they worked their asses off for me for a week, but they were like, oh, this felt like a vacation. <laughs> You know, that's that's, that's, awesome, a, yeah. that's a nice thing to hear, too, is that, um, you know, it, it, it's not all about the client, too, is you, you need to make your crew happy, too. You need to make mm -hmm. sure everybody is happy. Um, it can't just be kind of like, you know, a, the maid station or the, you know, the butler station behind the closed door is that like, mm -hmm. oh, everybody over there is unhappy. But all the client and everything here is just it has to be both. And, uh, you know, it, yeah. You, can't have that separation too much that um you know i'm sure on bigger stuff that i might find there needs to be a little bit more of a hierarchy but uh, sure i just just really haven't found that as a advantage everybody needs to be happy yeah i love i love having sushi on set too uh and surprising people we haven't worked with yet like oh my gosh your food is so good i'm like yes i yeah. do you know i'm i'm also often the one who's thinking about it because yeah. I'm like, I want you all to have a great experience and yeah. enjoy every bit of this, even though we're busting our ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And one thing with that hierarchy, uh, I, I think I found for me, I add like a caveat, like, yes, I want to hear everyone's ideas when it's appropriate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, because um, we've been on some big sets and this doesn't happen often, but we've been on big sets with, you know, maybe a crew of 15 and maybe you know, dozens of, of actors and extras and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're trying to work something out with the DP and, and the client. And then a PA comes up and is like, oh, well, I think that, well, you know, and oh, it might oh, not oh. even be a bad idea. It's you just know. an inappropriate time. So yeah. there's, you know, we try to encourage like, hey, PAs, if you have a great idea, talk to the AD or the production manager mm -hmm. or a gaffer or you know, gaffers talk to the DP and they can help figure out, okay, now would be a good time to talk about that. Yeah. Or yeah, you know, cause typically the higher level people too are the ones we've worked with more often. And so they could say, oh yeah, we've done that before. We do it this way for this reason yeah. Yeah. so that we don't have to explain that. So, so I like to add that caveat of like, yes, we want everyone's creative energy cause this is going to be so good because of it. Make sure it's an appropriate time to well, and if you've spent <laughs> enough time on set, that's something you immediately kind of pick up anyway. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. that 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 decision. There's a lot of other things going into that. I'm not even going to touch that. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's I think that's where it, it just simple communication. Uh, I mean, you know, it's very open and like I'll be loud when I say like, well, do what makes you happy, like to the DP. Like, you know, how do you want to attack it? Like, you know, we can mm -hmm. we can go a lot of different ways with this. Like, I just need something that sparkles, you know, I don't need something specific here. So figure out yeah. something that makes you happy. And I've really, I, I think I've found that on kind of when we're doing B-roll a lot, um, we'll get mm -hmm. what I need. And then it's like, okay, go find something that makes you happy. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's, gonna, that's gonna add to the project more than me figuring out some other shit for you to do is you figuring mm -hmm. out something, so. That's always kind of a yeah. nice way to do it, too. I love that. And I love working with people. And you can be like, yeah, I just want it like, you know, with like Jordan Post, for instance, I'll be like, I just need like a little more sexy on the side. Yeah. Uh, you know, give, give me some spice or hit me with this or, you know, and you have that shorthand and it's like, boom, they kind of have a sense and then they make it their own, you know, yeah. do it, do it in a better way than I would probably tell them to do it, which is awesome. Well, and I always like it, too. I mean, working with. Yeah. I mean, Jordan's the worst, but we get by somehow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get him out of here. Uh, but, you know, working with, you know, with the people that I work with, there's always um, there's always a baseline of like all of this stuff is checked off. So the variables that I always have to worry about are just 
very minor minutia on the top of it. It's mm. like, oh, let's a little bit moodier. Let's tone this down. It's it's very small things. So I mean, that's just mm -hmm. you know the the what is it the rising tide raises all ships and that sort of thing. Yep. You know, when you're working with people that are already going to give you a great quality product, you just there's so little that you necessarily have to contribute on top of that to make it great. Mm -hmm. so yep. That's always Absolutely. Really, really, really interesting and really good. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. Now it's time. All right. I think I timed that right. <laughs> Are those your kids? That's one kid that I just had say it over and over again, and I recorded it. Um, that's funny. Yeah, that's that's Magdalene. She's the four-year-old. She was great. I got to direct her a little bit. Um, so I actually told Daniel what was going to happen. So he had a little bit of time to prep. So we'll just jump right into it. We don't, uh, we're not going to play me, and John's not here. So we'll just get two truths and a lie from Daniel. Um, if you are unfamiliar with this game and you're listening, Daniel's going to tell us three different stories. Two of them are going to be truths, true stories. One of them is going to be a lie and we got to figure it out. If you're at home, you guess. Uh, I guess you could guess after the fact. We'll get notifications if you comment. Um, but if you guess and you guess correctly, we'll send you some, some sweet, sweet swag. What do I got? I had some stuff around here. Oh yeah, we got some some fun things. We got like stickers. <laughs> Christmas we got fun. this thing, which no one has any context for until after. Is that a uh, company? Is that a company Christmas. sticker, or did you just find it? Nope. This is a sticker we made for oh. our Christmas video, so yeah. it's it's contextual. It's a Back to the Future. We apocalypse. got some of these. I, I can neither confirm nor deny. Oh, I got. You know, we got all this stuff. I'll send you some stuff. No, I mean, I got, I, I got all my stuff too. My... Yes, I love that. By the way, I think I told you that the first time I saw that. The yeah. is it a was a VHS transformer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Which about that. Is, I, I I made my own transformer. So which was actually a lifelong you, dream of mine. Do you have more of those stickers? Because we could send oh, yeah. some of those if uh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So if people guess right, we'll send them some of your stickers too. Yeah, pins and all, right. all that stuff that I got too. So let's do it. Hit me with it. What are your three right. stories? Well, a story, story. I think uh, it so that there's some mystery. I think I have to. The initial presentation is going to be a little bit more brief. Anything yeah, that cool. you want in a follow up, we can we can elaborate more. But the initial presentation of the two truths and a lie will be a little bit brief, because otherwise, I think it just breaks down, and I can be. Uh, I don't think I lie really well. So I think that's I think that's what I'll I'll lean into. Um, yeah, brief, so, briefs are better than boxers anyway. So <laughs> just kidding. So I have uh, definitely shaken Jerry Rice's hand. Hmm. It's the, the most glorious hand I've ever touched. Um, I uh, have hosted uh, the biggest contest in the country. Um, I'll leave it at that because much more detail gets, gets, uh, and I have definitely been arrested <laughs> and put behind bars. Well, yeah, behind bars. So there's, there's three vague yeah. assumptions about my life. That's, I love it too. Uh, you might've done this on purpose, might not have done it on purpose. The first and the and the third, you said definitely. Oh yeah, definitely shaken Jerry Rice's hand, and number three, definitely been arrested and put behind bars. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not two, a good liar, but I know how to help <laughs> if I need to lie. We'll see. We'll see how it shakes out with you Let's or with see. anybody else. There we go. We got Aaron on YouTube over here. Arrested is the lie. That's his guess. Okay. Let's see. And then you said you've hosted the biggest contest in the country. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what that could be, what I know about you. Um, I know uh, all the cheese food work, uh, Wisconsin dairy farmers work you've done is streaming. There's a lot of it that's streaming. 
And I believe there's contests in there. So I'm wondering if maybe that is one of the things you're considering. So trying to think about this. Definitely like shaking said, Jerry Rice's the, hand. The brevity, the brevity helps. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely been arrested and put behind bars. I'll give you another second if you're watching uh, the other other folk who are watching. You can get your guesses in there. Um, yeah, definitely shaking Jerry Rice's hand, number one. Number two, has hosted the biggest contest in the country. Gaz Ruins, what's up? You can guess. Daniel's telling us his, his two truths and a lie. We're trying to guess his lie. Definitely, number three, definitely been arrested and put behind bars. I want them all to be true. <laughs> We've had people cheat like that before. I've cheated like that before on accident as well, which is really, really fun. You're like, oh, crap. So, that's all oh, that, 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 that did. Yeah. Happen. I was trying no, to I'm just super, super awesome. <laughs> all right. So what do we got? Um, I'm going to guess. Because Aaron guessed arrested is a lie. I just, we got to spread it out. We got to try to cover it. I'm going to say you haven't hosted the biggest contest in the country. So that's my guess. Okay. What do you got? Do you want, do you want the reveal? I want, I want the reveal. Lay I, it on I, I think the, the long and short of the reveal is that I chickened out and didn't introduce myself to Jerry Rice. So we were, oh, we were in a nice. bar together and I was like, oh my God, he's, he's one of my favorite players of all time. I love watching him and just chickened out. So that that's the that's the that's that story. He was he was enjoying himself with a drink and a cigar, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So oh, well, that was kind of you. That's that's the that's the chickening out. Everything else is uh, <laughs> same restaurant, same vicinity, but no. Yeah. So what was the biggest country or biggest contest in the country that you hosted? So that was for rollerblading at a skate park in Detroit. Tell me more. Oh, yeah. So I, I something I started when I was like 17 in like 2001 um, got bigger and bigger and bigger. And especially it kind of coincided, you know, I was doing it in skate park. It was kind of an underground thing. Um, it coincided with when, um, you know, kind of the X Games had kind of slimmed down. You know, oh, the height of the X Games was like the late 90s into the early, you know, 0102. Um, and X Games had slimmed down and they had eliminated rollerblading. So there was a very large <laughs> for that sort of, you know, kind of outlet, get together, come together, showcase of skill and camaraderie and all that sort of thing. So by the time I had done it annually, uh, by 09, 2008, 2009, 10, and probably into 11, we hit our height. And really, you know, it was thousand plus people in a skate park, uh, jam sessions, um, a lot of trade show booths, everybody kind of there to share rollerblading and everything together. So uh, the traveled around a little bit, but really found its home the last four years in Detroit, big skate park in Detroit. So oh, wow. uh, ended it in 13. Um, the industry was kind of waning and I was kind of really trying to refocus on my career. So that was kind of a, a, a larger switch to it. So, but yeah, that one's definitely nice. true. So that's, that's amazing. When are you going to get it going again? I mean, it seems like you have the talent. Uh, the, uh... Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing is it just, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it I, I think the most that I'm going to hopefully do in the future is a, um, kind of a, a a one-off kind of uh, reunion type of event, get everybody together, especially with uh, everybody loves rollerblading all of a sudden now. It's been one of the nerdiest mm -hmm. things to do on the planet for retro uh, decades. And now all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my God, it's retro. And then they put them on, roll around. And they're like, holy shit, this is fun. <laughs> so it's yeah, really, this, this is way really better than skates like it. this. <laughs> yeah. It's weird seeing it come in full circle. So yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, you've been arrested and put behind bars. Oh, yeah. For something I, something good. I mean, two guesses why. Rollerblading was skating. But um, um, yeah. the, the oddest part about it was, I guess the better way to tell the story would be when I told my grandmother, she started cracking up. 
um, specifically because I was arrested at a public skate park. Um, oh, they it, they had started to um, the city skate park. They just didn't really kind of get the idea of what the purpose of a public skate park was for was to like hmm. accommodate the activity outside of you know the city the streets the curbs the handrails and all that sort of thing and right um you know i was a grown ass adult man at the time and they the the way they had scheduled the skate park was if there wasn't a certain amount of people that showed up by like one or two in the afternoon they would just shut it down for the day and lock it up oh, okay which makes no sense to me if i'm working till 5 p.m so um, mm -hmm. A couple of my buddies had made our way over there, you know, in the mm -hmm. after, afternoon after work. And we just ducked under the fence and rollerbladed. And one thing led to another. I uh, tried to state Good my use point. of uh, public money. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to state my point to the officer. Uh, he didn't like me arguing with him. And I uh, put my foot in my mouth with the phrase, this is whatever you want it to be. And he decided that jail was what he wanted now this is happening <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh that's the magic word i'm never gonna use around an arresting officer again so yeah right yeah it, it's that that idea of like okay how do i say this respectfully mm -hmm. <laughs> well and i mean that's where the conversation started i mean he's approaching yeah. people thinking they're hooligans and i'm like hey i've been working all day i just wanted to skate and that's not what they want to hear you're like, you want to see this cool 720? I've been working yeah. on it on these sweet blades. Or I could just tell talk. them I pay my taxes <laughs> and this is city. And that's a that's also a great thing that they want to hear too. So. Yeah. I pay your taxes. Yep. Yep. I am also you. jail. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Still, you know what? You know what's still going to happen? Jail. Whatever <laughs> I want this to be, jail. And a little uh, search. You got, you got something on you? <laughs> it's going to get uncomfortable. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, yeah, it was worries. so much fun to catch up with you. Missed you on Tuesday. We had to cancel that event. Uh, for oh yeah, MVP. yeah. We we've but, been uh, we've been struggling with how much everybody wants to get together mm -hmm. to uh, you know social professionally socialize in this type right. of environment. It's a hard thing to get a to get a barometer on. I also like our MMP group because I don't feel like it's professional. I just in the sense of I feel like it's just us. Yeah. You know? Like oh. it's just our people and we're just hanging. Like I, I love it. And yep. a AAF is great, but I always mm -hmm. feel like I'm like, okay, now I have to be a marketer, and, yep. you know, to some degree. You got to put on that hat. Yep. So awesome. Well, thanks for coming on and taking the time. Uh, yeah, let's see. Is there anything you want to plug? Oh, geez. I can't imagine. Uh, I mean, I think, I think the only thing that I'd love to plug is that, um, you know, the, the, the biggest thing probably coming out of this year that I'll be most proud of hopefully will be landing next year. Um, long and short of it is there, it'll end up being kind of 16 videos that will be kind of mini chef's table episodes. Oh, uh, cool. For cheeses. So that's <clears throat> one of the things we shot later in the year. We're still kind of working on production. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of, you know, kind of what we've done so far and um, the rough edits so far. I think they'll be um, really enjoyable for anybody that's kind of into that genre of chef's table, food network, anything like that. And I think it'll be right up. Good things. Yep. Yeah. And they'll just be quick little snippets, a couple minutes, and you can learn a lot about cheese and anything that you want to pair with them. And it was from experience. It was all delicious. So. Yeah, I was going to ask, maybe you got to have like a little camera behind the scenes of you just, you know, mowing down on it all as like a little trailer. Like, you want some of this? Tune yes. in next week. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, awesome. we'll see once those gets get up and running. I'll be, you know, one of the things more proud of this year. So, cool. Sweet. Yeah, share that with us. Can't wait to see it. Absolutely. Um, also, you can check out your website. I believe that's the right URL, right? That the is definitely the right URL. So typically I just Google, you know, I don't, I don't write URLs. So, um, check that out yep. to see more Daniel Kinney. And if you're listening to this, hit that follow that like that subscribe, do all the things. I don't know. You're on YouTube, <laughs> hit a bell or something. Smash it. One of the, 
one of these days, smash it. One of these days, I got to figure out all the things that you can do and just say them all. <laughs> um, you can check out our pat- podcast wherever podcasts are sold. We're on Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, this radio thing, like everywhere. <laughs> there, it's just everywhere. Check us out. Come hang out. Let us know what you want to hear more of. Give us a review. I'm told that uh, is good for things. I don't know. Of course. Do, do all the stuff. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, let's see. <laughs> Aaron says, don't know why rollerblading everyone away. Outdoor exercise, easy to do. Sounds like Aaron was a rollerblader. So. Yeah. Well, the the pandemic really kicked that off. Yeah. Outdoor exercise. Yeah, that's right. Away from people. Yeah, I yeah. love it. All right. Well, that's what we got. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Cool.